One of the cornerstones of Ark of War is building a stable of commanders. But not all commanders are worth your time and resources. Today, I'm going to tell you which commanders are, when, and why. We're building a tier list, Airship Edition. Get excited. This is going to be part one of a three part series where we go through all of the commanders in Ark of War and figure out which ones are good, which ones are bad, and when they're good and bad. And what I mean by that is certain commanders are going to be good in the early game, certain commanders are going to be good in the mid game, and then certain commanders are going to be good in the late game. And they're not all going to scale. So we're going to talk about which ones are good and when, uh, and hopefully give you some information about where you should be investing resources, magazines, building gear, etc. All right, let's jump in. Albert sucks. You do not need Albert. Uh, he does have an interesting first skill that has value at level one, uh, which means that the target will go last. His second skill that you can use with all troop types. None of these things is going to help you win. Do not use Albert. All right, next commander, Axe. Sucks. Uh, he is just, so what happened with Ark of War? In the early days, there's been a lot of inflation. The early days was a very different game. Things were a lot harder to come by, their the resources were less, and the commanders weren't as compelling as some of the ones that come out now are. Axe is an early day commander. He's not good. He didn't scale with the game. So uh, don't use Axe for anything. Uh, Battlemaid's interesting. She is a balanced comm, which means one of her skills helps a lot with, uh, it ramps for offense. The other one applies damage reduction for a certain amount of time. I've seen really good, I've never tried to work with her, but I've seen really good battle maid builds every now and again. They're rare, but you do find them. Uh, so I'm gonna give battle maid in the B tier. Black, Black is the best offensive commander in the game. Uh, his best offense skill takes defense and it converts it to offense. When that thing hits, it hits like a freight train. Uh, Black is as good a commander as you will find if you like to play offense. Uh, you can get him fairly early on. He is worth So whenever you can get black, you can start building him. All right, next up, Blader. Uh, he's not bad. He was better a couple years back. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the Ramping Commanders, but uh, yeah, he, 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 you don't want, he's not gonna get you very far. You might be able to use him for like six months or so, and then you're gonna probably grow out of him. So I'm gonna put him in the C tier. Cohen. Uh, Cohen is not bad. You're gonna find him early in the game. He does have a guaranteed hit, which is helpful, uh, mini nuke, uh, but it only triggers at 20%. Uh, you, you could start with Cohen. When you first start the game, if you get him out of the warp gate, uh, you could start to build into him and he's gonna last you up to maybe level, I don't know, 15 or so. Uh, but you're not gonna, uh, he's not gonna get you too much further than that, but he's not a bad starter commander. You could get him to S and get the, get the leadership you invested off of him fairly quickly. Darurai. Uh, Darurai is pretty rare. He, I actually tried to do something with him several years back. Uh, he never really panned out in a, in a great way. Uh, I would not uh, invest a whole lot into him. His soul burn skill is interesting. It triggers at 60%. That's the basis for tear space. So the, the skill that the, the tier 12 hit point troops have, airships, that's the skill that it's based on. Uh, Drurai is okay. If you, if you happen to come across him, you might want to do something with him, but not great. Uh, put him at B. Next up is Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer is the most versatile airship commander in the game. You can play her as a utility comm and you can run her all the way into the late game. She is incredibly offensive. Uh, she has a guaranteed hit skill that triggers at 40% crushing blow. Her shockwave skill has an incredible effect whatever it does for damage on the slot that it hits it applies to all the other slots regardless of the defense of the other slots uh, that has stopped the meta where people will put a single ranger in slot one because dragon slayer will mess them up uh, get dragon slayer as early as you can get her if you are an airship commander invest whatever you want she will take you all the way to the late game for now s tier for sure all right eo EO is a commander that I spent a lot of time trying to build. I had a lot of fun building her and a lot of fun playing her. 
Uh, she is another ramping commander, which I know I said I don't like, but she ramps penetration, and that is a pretty powerful thing, especially in the middle game, where it's tough to get 100% penetration. 100% penetration is important because it allows you to essentially negate all the defensive buffs of your opponent, so pretty powerful thing to have. Uh, I would almost, I was really close to having EO at S tier, but realistically, EO is A tier. Uh, you, but she's fun. The only reason I stopped playing her, funny story, is because uh, in FBI, uh, I was running her and running her in simulations, and I had, you know, I had a lot of leadership and I had a lot of gear invested in her. And they were like, they basically came to me and said, look, we're trying to win Galactic Battle here. Knock it off with the O. For what you're invested in that commander, it should be Dragon Slayer or Black. There you go. All right, Golem. Golem was the king of the airships in the very early part of this game. His crush skill is incredible. Uh, it's really, really strong. You could, if you get Golem, you could play him for a really long time and you could even play him well into the late game, I think, particularly when you apply sort of the penetration meta. But he's gonna do a really good job for you early on. You don't see a lot of Golem players that much anymore, which is a shame, but Golem, I'm gonna put him in the A tier. All right, next up, Grievous. Uh, Grievous is an interesting comm, very cool looking comm. Uh, he has an amazing heal at 80%, uh, but other than that, he just does, he's another one. He was an early game commander. Skills were great in the uh, in the early days of Ark of War. Didn't really scale. I've seen a couple people try and use his uh, heal as a force skill. It doesn't behave the way a lot of the heals in the game do. It only heals you on your attack damage, so you have to hit before you get the heal back. Not as effective as some of the some of like something like Elf's heal. So, Grievous, cool commander, but uh, his day is gone. He's C tier. Jigen, useless. He has a yeah. He's another one. Early game commander. Even in the early game, he was never really that good. Uh, he has this oscillating wave skill that. It picks a random enemy and has them go last. I don't even know what you would, how you would plan around that. Uh, Jigen is useless. Stay away from him. Lady and Beast. Lady and Beast is, a, is an interesting commander. Uh, she's got destructive power as her skill, which is triggers at eighty percent, and it will. It works kind of like King, where uh, if the if the slot dodges where she's attacking, it will come back and it will do a guaranteed hit on that slot. Uh, you, so that's an interesting thing. It actually has a lot of application as a fourth skill. Uh, a lot of folks will use uh, Destructive Power as a four skill for Black because Black does not have a guaranteed hit. Um, but Lady and Beast, she's more, she's probably better as a four skill to steal for another commander than she is for herself. But that said, you could use her if you wanted to. Uh, she's born S, so you don't have to get a lot of medals to get her up there. Uh, so we'll give her at B. Next up is Leona. Uh, Leona's a commander that I haven't really spent a lot of time trying to play with. You might be able to come up with a build for her that is relevant. Uh, one of the aspects of her is that she gets stronger as her slots reduce in size. So she has to lose troops before her attack buffs really start kicking in. Uh, I haven't encountered a lot of Leona's. I don't think a lot of folks are playing her. I don't think she ever took. I don't think she ever will. Uh, Leona, you are a C commander. Magician. Uh, Magician is a commander you don't see a lot of. Uh, he's a balanced comm. He's in the business of trading magic marks. So you are got a 60% chance he's gonna receive magic marks. If you have magic marks, they're gonna give you some damage reduction. Uh, and then they're also gonna help you attack. You don't see a lot of magicians. Uh, I think it's probably his skills are confusing. Might be a really good commander. Someone would have to go in and try and figure out a build. Uh, but magician, I see you as nothing more than a C commander. Megan, useless. Uh, skills don't really affect the battle much at all. They're old, again, didn't scale as the game grew. Uh, she does have bunny ears, so maybe she'd be a good Twitch streamer, not a good airship commander. Next up is Orochi. Uh, Orochi is an incredible defensive airship commander. Uh, his Menderbot is a great skill that makes him impervious to steam cannon, so his heal cannot be debuffed. Uh, his corrosive armor is okay. It's it's not as good as I'd like it to be, but it's still pretty strong. Uh, I recently switched, made Orochi my main, uh, and he has been performing very, very well. Orochi, one of the best commanders in the game. 
All right, Raymond. Raymond is a faction commander. He has a uh, dead shot, which is a 40% guaranteed hit skill. Hits twice, but doesn't hit very hard. You can get him early in the game. He's available in the Ace of Galaxy store. And Deadshot is a great fourth skill for some of the commanders that need a guaranteed hit. Obviously, it doesn't help you in the debuff meta with Kanes and Preemptive, but you still, it comes in handy quite a bit. So for Raymond, you are a B-class commander because of all the things that you do for us. All right, next up, Regina. Regina or Regina? I don't know. Anyway, uh, Regina is a balanced comm. She's, throughout the course of the battle, she is currently hitting her on base skill, which is going to continue stacking. Uh, the more times it's stack, and it, with each stack, she's getting a uh, damage reduction. So she's getting more and more survivable as the battle goes on. At the same time for each stack, her offense goes up. So she's a commander, you don't see her played a lot. I have a feeling she could be pretty good in the mid game. I've never really spent a lot of time trying to build her, but I think there's potential there, and for that, I am going to put her in the B tier. All right, next up is Reinhardt. Uh, Reinhardt is a great commander, and I mained him for quite a while. Uh, his hyperspace armor is very powerful because it ignores tier suppression. What that means is you can play Reinhardt with tier one troops and be effective against tier 12 tier troops. So. That's pretty powerful, which means you can play him on server without fear of heavy losses. This is why you see so many Reinhardts. And then he also scales into the late game. You can play him with top troops in a galactic battle or in Kassatan, and you're gonna get pretty good results. So, well, I wouldn't use high tier troops in Kassatan necessarily, but you get the idea. At any rate, Reinhardt, great commander, one of the best airship commanders in the game. Uh, I would get him as soon as you can if you want to build a uh, defensive air commander and build him up. One thing to note about Reinhardt, he is very susceptible to steam cannon and he is very beatable by Sister Wolf. Sister Wolf, because of the way uh, she attacks, she is able to whittle him down to nothing. So beware of that, but other than, but for the most, most scenarios, Reinhardt is a great, great comp. Okay, next up is Rocket. Rocket's an early game commander. She has been nerfed multiple times. She was she was a defense comp. She was the Reinhardt of her day or the, the Orochi of her day, but she was too powerful and they kept making her less powerful. So I feel bad. You can't use her in this day and age. Like there's not anything you can do with her. Uh, I once tried putting her uh, thorn skill onto Rogers. It wasn't great. Uh, you can get a lot of it. You can get up to 30 pretty easily, but it didn't do very well. So. Because she used to be great, I am going to put her into the C tier. Really, she's useless though. There's not a lot you can do with a rocket. On to Rogers. Rogers was the boss commander of this game until they came up with ways to beat damage reduction. Uh, Rogers' defensive stance skill stacks damage reduction and will do so to a point where he could not be hit. Uh, because there was a time where you didn't have formal halt, you didn't have commanders like Kang, or Lady and Beast that could ignore damage reduction. So Rogers would just go into immune state and stay there. Uh, he, the game has grown around him. He's not quite kept up. He is having a new weapon come out with the next release. So maybe that will bring him back into the meta. But for now, Rogers, you are in the B tier. Saber. Saber is a new commander. Uh, he is very defensive. He is so defensive that he has not been able to, in simulation, do very much offensively. I see one or two folks trying to main Saber in the late game with, you know, give him max leadership. Uh, I haven't seen him perform very well. Maybe I'm just missing it. Uh, so I have not seen that you would go out of your way for Saber. Plus he's expensive at this point since his, he just came out a couple months back. Uh, so Saber, you are in the C tier. Soul Reaver General. He is a very cool commander when you have his weapon. This is because his weapon will allow you to destroy the commander directly if there are no troops in the back row. Um, this is pretty powerful and this can stop when you're in galactic battle. If you've got a whole row of one slot bus, you can kind of tear through those. I have a video uh, doing exactly this thing to Odad with a march of tier one airships. So. There's a lot of utility you get out of Soul Reaver General. That said, he is a utility commander. I would not main him. 
He just, he does cool things, but it's not strong enough where you want to go to the late game with him. So, Soul Reaver General, you are in the B tier. Next up, Takeda. Uh, Takeda was my very first main commander that I got to S. Uh, he, because I, when I got him, he just comes out as S. So, Takeda has a guaranteed hit skill, but it only triggers at 20%. Uh, he's generally not someone you're going to use. Uh, he does. He's, he's, he comes around at Christmas because he has the Santa Claus skin. But ultimately, Takeda, uh, I'll give him. I'll put him in C tier for that skill. But he, you know, not someone you're going to want to use. Uh, if you get him, you can keep him around. But that's fine. Last but certainly not least is Vega. Uh, Vega introduced penetration to the game of Ark of War. Uh, his breakdown skill, which triggers at 40%, is a guaranteed hit. And it can at skill six at level 60, it will apply 120% penetration. Uh, when this first came out, and this was the first time we ever saw penetration, it was pretty amazing to what he could do to commanders. Uh, he also it also had it was really funny the way it worked with the light of Gemini uh, gem skill, because it would have apply the penetration both to the first and second hit. So he could do some crazy crazy damage as a one slot bus commander. Uh, he's also got a healing skill, which isn't as big a deal, but he's born B, which means he's very uh, cheap to awaken as well. So Vega in his time was a very important part of this game and was a really good commander to have. Today, you could still run Vega well into the late game. Uh, if you were trying to, you know, be competitive, but don't want to spend all the money that the big players do, uh, you could absolutely roll with a Vega. Uh, and then, if nothing else, you can use Breakdown as your fourth skill for another commander. So, Vega, A tier, he's awesome. All right, those are my airship commander tiers. Did I get it right? Of course I did. But if you think I didn't, prove me wrong in the comments. Next up, we'll be doing infantry commanders. Till then, cheers.